Yes. Okay, perfect then. <clears throat> Just a few words about me. Uh, I'm handling all the digital uh, activities for the sports division at Canal Plus. Uh, I've been in broadcasting almost 20 years, starting uh, by being an announcer uh, for the NBA and then golfing. I launched two channels, uh, NBA Plus and then Golf Plus for Canal Plus and then ended up running the sports uh, for the digital division uh, at Canal Plus. We always been very keen in doing uh, new stuff on digital. Uh, we were the first ones uh, in France to launch a second screen app uh, that was a soccer app, football app. Then we launched a rugby and Formula One app which uh, just won a, an award at the last portal. Uh, we were the first one to do 360 live uh, for a sport event that was a boxing match. And we are also doing two live shows on Facebook every week. Uh, and those are um, broadcast quality uh, shows that we do on, on Facebook, which was uh, kind of new uh, in France uh, and in Europe uh, as well. As far as my uh, theme um, for uh, tonight, uh, is uh, TV Day uh, as a sports screen? Um, first of all, a bit of context because we are all very into digital innovation in sports. But if you look at uh, the data, uh, it's not uh, a clear cut uh, as um, most of the people uh, in, this, um, in this small world are, are thinking. Um, if you look at uh, those data from the UK, uh, if you look at the average video time um, per day, if you look at that, um, live TV is still way ahead of all the other devices and platforms and it's still true even uh, for the 16 to 24 years old segment um, and we're always talking about uh, those um, uh, millennials uh, not watching TV at all but if you look at the data it's not completely true um, and even for the people who subscribe to an OTT offer they are still watching more live TV than they are watching OTT again according to uh, to the data from uh, Comscore uh, which is from the US. Um, obviously the other thing is that there was a lot of talk about ESPN losing subscribers, uh, firing a lot of journalists the past few months but um, again um, that's true they are losing subscribers like most of the pay TV uh, brands all around the world that's even true for Canal Plus, for Sky Sports in, in the UK um, but again um, in 2011, ESPN was paid less than $5 per, per subscribers in the US. Now it's almost $8 per subscribers, uh, according to a research firm. Um, so that means that they are still collecting $2.3 billion every year from their subscribers, which is still a lot, and they're still making a lot of money for Disney. Um, so just a bit of context to maybe put some stuff in perspective. Um, Yes, pay TV is um, is going into a big revolution, but uh, I mean, live TV is still very big all around the world. Um, and it's even true uh, if you look at advertising. That's uh, another research that I that I found um, from Ipsos. Um, if you look at the impact of advertising, um, and you get all of, all of those questions that were asked to to a panel um, again. TV advertising is still very impactful and uh, actually uh, a lot more than any other media. Um, so from that perspective, TV, uh, yes, it's, uh, it's not dead. But obviously we're going into um, a big revolution right now in terms of distribution because obviously um, OTT is taking over with all those direct-to-consumer uh, app that we, are, that we can now subscribe to or even with Facebook, which is the only uh, free um, platform on this panel that I put into that slide. Um, obviously, you've got the Zone, the Perform app, which is doing very well in Europe. They launch in Canada. You've got all those uh, sports league apps like the NFL, uh, the ATP, the PGA Tour. They all have uh, their own OTT app. Obviously, there, there were a lot of talk of uh, Amazon buying uh, rights for the NFL. Uh, and they also bought the rights for the ATP um, Master 1000 and Master Th Masters 500 in the UK. So um, obviously a lot of new players are coming into the market 
Uh, all the other players, the older ones, like ESPN, obviously, uh, they're going to, they're putting a lot of effort into their, their OTT platform. We're doing the same thing in France with, uh, with Canal, and we have our own platform, which is called MyCanal. Uh, Sky is doing the same in the UK uh, with a strategy a bit different than ours. Um, but if you look at uh, the SPN losing subscribers in the line of your business, but getting a lot of OTT subscribers, and basically if you look at those data by 2020, they will uh, break even in terms of um, subscribers. Uh, they, will, they will have gained the subscribers they lost uh, the past few years, so, so good for them. Um, so um, I don't think uh, the TV uh, will be dead as a device, uh, not at all. Um, I mean, um, obviously I was at a conference this year where the uh, people from BuzzFeed were kept telling that people will only watch um, videos on mobile, and I'm not buying that at all. I think the experience of the big couch and big screen will always be something with the 4K TVs, soon 8K TVs, um, smart TVs, and so on. I think the, the true revolution is that we are coming from a world of, ch of channels to a world of apps. And if you look at those um, pictures that I found online, uh, you see people um, basically um, looking at different apps where they used to switch between channels. Does that make a big difference in terms of um, usage? I'm not sure. I think it's a big distribution thing. I think it's huge for all the players in the market. I don't think that's, uh, that's a huge difference in terms of uh, the way consumers are, are watching TV uh, as a device again. And um, if you look at the, uh, the the right part of the pictures, um, you see people, and that's the that's the new thing to me. They are all watching TVs with an iPad or with an iPhone in their hands, and the second screen is very big uh, today. Which uh, brings me to to my last slide. Uh, I've met a lot of different companies doing a lot of new uh, innovative uh, apps. Um, which were supposed to basically kill TV. And I saw them switch the past few years, the past few months, um, and now they are trying to be uh, a complement to the TV screen. Um, at the top left, you've got the Fox VR app. Um, um, and um, basically, the, the, that, that app, which is uh, made by LiveLike, was supposed to be uh, mostly used by people who have a a complete VR gear with the helmet and so on. But basically, it ended up being an app where you're basically using your iPhone or your iPad to, uh, as a remote control, to switch between the different feeds, uh, the VR and 360 and 180 uh, feeds that you can uh, access on. So basically, it's an iPad as a remote control, and, still, and you're still watching uh, the TV. On the bottom right, You've got um, a company, a French company called Immersive, um, which is working with the HoloLens uh, Microsoft uh, helmet. And again, um, it's basically an AR uh, device uh, which uh, will allow you to improve your TV experience by accessing data and so on uh, in, uh, with AR, but you're still watching TV. So again, the true revolution is that we're coming from a 100% linear world where you had to switch between different channels. Now you're going to switch between Netflix, MyCanal, uh, the ESPN app, the NBA League Pass, the NFL Pass, the tennis TV from the ATP, and so on. Um, it's going to change a lot of things for people that are in the sports market, uh, in the sports rights market, for example. Uh, because obviously there's a lot of uh, newcomers um, bidding for rights, um, older players which are going to lose rights, um, but basically I don't think that TV is going to be dead as a device. Uh, I just think that um, the distribution is going to um, totally change in the next few years. So cable and satellite are probably dead in the next few years. I don't think TV will be dead in the next few years, uh, not at all.